This is the second video in Module 17. Now we're going to learn a practical application of how to work with quadratics and what they're able to solve in real life. And by doing this, we're going to also work with a shape and a formula. So today's discussion is about Pythagorean theorem. Would you please go to your notes? Okay. If you look here, this formula we're going to work today called Pythagorean theorem is only used for a right triangle. And if you recall, a triangle, that's right, has that little 90 degree angle in the corner, that little box. And the important thing to know is when you're dealing with the right triangle, the two sides that are connected, the base and the height of that right triangle that connect to the right angle, they are called legs. The other side that's slanted, that is across from that right angle, is called the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right triangle. And what the Greek mathematician Pythagoras found out is if you take the leg of the triangle and square it, and you take the other leg of the triangle and square it, and you add them up, that will equal the same thing as the hypotenuse squared. So Pythagorean's rule or theorem is leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Well, that's a lot. So another way to talk about that rule, that formula, is instead of using the words leg and hypotenuse, he uses variables. And he says one of the legs is going to call A, the second leg he's going to call B, and the third, the hypotenuse, he's going to call C. So many of you are, may have already heard Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And it's just the relationship between the two legs and the hypotenuse. Now what we're going to do today is learn how to work the Pythagorean theorem with some examples. So we're going to start off with example one. It says, find the length of the given right triangle if the legs are six feet and eight feet. So let's go to the board and work this out. Okay, so here's my right triangle, a sketch of it drawn. The first thing you want to do is label the sides A, B, and C. This is the right angle. It's the side opposite of it. That is the hypotenuse. So if this is the hypotenuse, we always label it with the C. The other two sides are called legs. And it doesn't matter which one you label A or B. I'm going to label that one A and that one B. To find a missing side of a right triangle, Pythagoras figured out a formula that always works. And Pythagorean's theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you look, guys, a formula is an equation because it has an equal sign. And if you look closely, this equation has squares in it. So this is not linear. This is quadratic. So that's how it relates to what we're doing in algebra. The Pythagorean theorem is a quadratic equation. Now, because we have numbers, we could substitute them in. Uh, a is 6, B is 8, and C I do not know, so I leave it there. Now, we're going to use our arithmetic skills and our algebra skills. We know order of operations, we have to square first. So 6 times 6 is 36, 8 times 8 is 64. 36 plus 64 is 100. Now. If you're like me, I don't like the variable on the right side. So we've already discussed this. You could rewrite this equation and just flip-flop it. This says c squared equals 100. This is quadratic. It has a square. Now the question is, do you want to set it equal to 0 and factor it? Or do you want to do your square root method? Well, we found out when we work with Pythagorean theorem, it's really quicker to do the square root method. The opposite of squaring is square root. Squares and square roots are opposites, inverses. They cancel each other out. We all know we have a square root of 100 here. What is the square root of 100? It is 10. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Miss Black, you forgot to put the plus or minus. Think about this a minute. C stands for the hypotenuse of a right triangle. 
and the hypotenuse is a side. And we're trying to find out the length of that side. Could the length of that side be a negative number? No. So when we work Pythagorean theorem, we don't put the plus or minus here because we know the answer's got to be positive because we're talking about a length of a side. And that side is 10 inches, or for this example, I'm sorry, it's 10 feet. And that's an application of the square root method. Okay, let's try one more example out of our notes. So again, what shape are we dealing with? We're dealing with a right triangle. How do we know it's a right triangle? We're looking at the shape. So if you look at example three, we have the triangle. It's kind of slanted. There's the right angle. We have this side labeled 7 and this side labeled 5. OK, before you even write down Pythagorean theorem, everybody look. What shape is this? It's a right triangle. How do you know? It has a right angle. Label. Go across. This side is the hypotenuse. What variable is always the hypotenuse? C. The other two sides are legs. What are the legs? A and B. It doesn't matter which one you label A. It doesn't matter which one you label B. OK, now, we're finding a missing side. We're going to do Pythagorean theorem. We write down the formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We look at our picture and substitute our numbers in the correct spot. Do I have anything for A? No. A squared plus what's my B? 5 equals what's my C? 7. So everybody listen very carefully. You just can't take these numbers and substitute it wherever you like. You have to label them A, B, and C. This has got to be the number C. It is the hypotenuse. Now, can we do anything with A squared? Not right now. Plus, 5 squared is 25. 7 squared is 49. It's an equation. It has an equal sign. It's quadratic. It's squared. So the decision is, do you want to set it equal to 0 and factor it, or do you want to do the square root method? We found out the square root method is a lot quicker and easier. So to square root, we said we got to move everything to the right we can. We can move to 25. So we get a squared. This cancels as opposites. 49 minus 25 is 24. Good. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. Squares and square roots are opposites, just like a and subtract are opposites, so they cancel out. There's the a. Equals. Because we're doing Pythagorean theorem and we're finding a missing side, we know this answer is going to be positive. That is why we're not putting the plus or minus. So we have a square root of 24. Now you have to read your directions carefully. As you all know from previous modules, any number that's in a square root has to be reduced. So what perfect square is in 24? Do you remember your list? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. Four divides into this. So this is 4 times 6. Which number can I square root? I could square root 4. What is the square root of 4? 2. It comes out. Can you square root 6? No. There's no number times itself that is 6. So we leave 6 inside. So the answer is the length of side A is 2 square root 6. That's the answer in radical form. And remember, we talked about the word radical being interchangeable with the word root. Sometimes, though, we want to know what the actual number is on the number line. So this is when and only when you need your calculators. If I want to know what this actual number is, I would use my calculator. And you would type in your calculator, 2 times square root 6 equals. And what your calculator is going to do is going to spit out a decimal. And that decimal is going to be very long. It's going to be an irrational number. And what's going to happen is you're going to be asked to round it. Okay, so it's very important that you understand that. Okay, that when we use our calculators, we're going to get a decimal. And then we're going to have to round that answer.
But if they say leave it in radical form, that means just reduce the root and leave it alone. So I hope you learned today, we've seen a practical application of why you need to know how to solve a quadratic equation and also why you need the square root method. See you on the next video. Thank you.